Hey guys, so for this video, I want to cover all the newest Fortnite settings your favorite pro players are using. I got the idea for this video after watching the Duo FNCS Grand Finals this weekend, and I noticed some interesting things about the people playing in the tournament. Many of their games had bass boosted audios, different colors that were not from the in-game colorblind modes, and some even had custom crosshairs. Therefore, I went out, researched how and why they changed those features, and am now ready to share them all with you guys. Really quick Quickly though, I'll put up some timestamps in case you want to skip around. As always, I suggest watching the whole thing through since it's good to try out the new settings and see which ones you truly prefer. Without further ado, let's get right on into the good stuff. The first major setting option I'm going to talk about is Bass Boosted Audio. This is the name of the settings change top tier pros like FaZe Mongrel and Liquid Metro use to hear footsteps better in game. All they do is use Windows or a third party application to enhance low frequency sound sounds on their PC, thus improving their spatial awareness. And if you're wondering what that sounds like, here's a little taste. That sounds way better than the normal one, right? Well, here's how you do it. Start by searching up your sound settings in your Windows Cortana box and click on the settings tab that appears. Then on the top right under related settings, hit sound control panel. From there, go over to your headphones or your main audio output, right click on it and go down to properties. You should see this page and you want to proceed to the enhancements tab at the top. If you don't see it or don't have it, don't worry because I will talk about that in a minute. Anyways, take the bass boost option, click on the settings near the bottom, and adjust it how you would like. What Mongrel and Metro use though is 50 Hz for frequency and 24 decibels for the boost level. Lastly, make sure you tick the loudness equalization setting as well and have the configuration option set 3 ticks from the left like this. Press apply and you're all set. As for everyone who didn't see the Bass Boost option, it likely means your audio driver is outdated. To check, go back to your Windows Cortana box and search up Device Manager. Go down to the Sound, Video, and Game Controller, hit the drop down, and find the high definition audio driver you are using. Right click, press Update Driver, browse my computer for driver software, let me pick from a list of available drivers on my computer, and select the first model device you see. Finally, press Next, click Yes on the update driver warning, and that will install the newest driver with the Bass Boost option within it. Just make sure you restart your PC. Now, some of you won't be as lucky as this, and your pre-installed driver will not give you this option. You will instead have something like Bass Management, which displays a bunch of useless settings we don't care about. Even worse is what happened in my case, where I went out and updated my drivers, yet nothing changed at all. If this is a problem you are experiencing, don't worry because there is a solution. What you have to do is search up Equalizer APO on Google and go to the first download link on a website called SourceForge.net. It should look exactly like this and should be brought to you by a guy named Jay the Daring. If you're on the right page, then hit the big green download button, run it after it fully completes, and install it on your PC. Once that happens, you should get a configuration window that looks like this, and you want to tick the connector that says default device. From there, restart your your PC, open up your file explorer, go to the drive you downloaded it to, and click program files. The equalizer APO will be there near the Epic Games one, so hit it and run the editor.exe program. This is where we can finally change the bass boost, and to do it, go in the first channel right here that says preamplification, and change the gain to 5.80 decibels. Second, remove the small number 2 tab and replace it by hitting the green plus button at the bottom with one of the advanced filters called loudness correction. For that specific setting, make the reference level 0 decibels, reference offset 7 decibels, and attenuation 1.00. Third and finally, for the graphics EQ tab, copy all the values I have on the right side into yours. You could, if you really wanted to, try and drag each of the numbered circles to the values I just showed, but it's way easier to input them manually. Regardless, once you've done all of that, you'll have the exact same audio settings as Mongrel. Moving on, the next next major setting option we have is Mongrel.
Mongrel and Booga's custom crosshair cursors. I'm sure you've all seen these before. They are big plus signs rather than the normal white mouse cursor you get by default. The benefit of it is that it makes things behind your cursor way easier to see. For example, if you're swapping weapons in your inventory, your cursor won't block it out as much. Additionally, it can be a little more precise since you should be looking at the center of it, not at the top of it as you would with the default one. How you get it is by starting back on your desktop and searching up mouse settings in the bottom left. From there, go to additional mouse options in the related settings, click the pointers tab on the top, and select browse. You'll then be given a ton of different options for cursors and can choose whichever one you like. I believe Mongrel himself uses the one called cross underscore IL. There are a few different cross options on top of that. Last thing you need to do is apply the new mouse cursor you choose, and you'll now see it both in-game and out of game on Fortnite. Third major settings change is another one from the Legend Code life that will instantly boost your FPS. It's quite literally one tiny change within your config file and it will drastically help with your game's performance. To begin, go to your desktop once again, but this time hit your Windows key and your R key at the same time to bring up your run box. Within your run box, type up percent local app data percent, hit OK, press on the Fortnite game folder, saved, config, Windows client, and look for the game user settings file. Right click on it, go down to properties, and make sure the read-only box is not ticked. After that, right-click on the game user settings file again and press the edit option. What you're looking for is a setting called SG Shading Quality under the Scalability group. You want to change the value you have now, most likely 3, to the value 0. This will make your game a tad bit darker, but will more importantly make it easier for your game to load up graphics, thus improving your FPS. For everyone who doesn't have the option in your game files, there's two simple workarounds you can follow. The first is to write the code line in yourself, literally just go to the scalability group section where it should be and type it in. Then the other way is to go back to the Fortnite game folder from the start, right click on it, and rename it to another name. Code Life recommends adding a number to the end of it like Fortnite Game 1, and what this will do is effectively reset all your game files, meaning you should now have the shading quality option available. The only thing you should know is it will reset your graphic settings in game. I personally like the look of it alone way better, which is why I'm going to continue to use it. Second to last settings change is yet another FPS boost program that I learned from the orange guy. Its name is the NVIDIA Inspector. I've heard a lot of good things about this method, especially when it comes to reducing input delay. The main problem, however, is that it's only available for people with NVIDIA GPUs, hence the name NVIDIA Inspector. To download it, open up Google, search NVIDIA Inspector, and go to the first link on guru3d.com. The page should look like this, and you want to go down to the bottom and click on the first download link for NVIDIA Inspector 1.9.7.6. Once it downloads, open up the RAR file and drag the guru3d.com folder onto your desktop. From there, click on the folder and run NVIDIA Inspector.exe. After that, click on this little icon next to the driver version option, wait for this screen to pop up, and search for the Fortnite profile at the top. Orange Guy himself recommends you switch the maximum pre-rendered frames to 2 on this drop down over here. If it starts to feel laggy though, switch it back to the default of use the 3D application setting. On top of that, he also advises you change the anti-aliasing transparency super sampling option to AA underscore mode underscore replay underscore mode underscore all. Lastly, the really important setting is the next one under the texture filtering called LOD bias. Zero is the normal value you're given and the higher you go, the less input delay you will feel. Be aware though, the higher values also mean your game will not look as nice. That's why Orange Guy chose something in the middle like 1. Oh, and before I forget, hit apply changes at the top and you're all set to boot up Fortnite. Looking now at Orange Guy's test, you can see the graphics look a lot blurrier and not as nice on those higher value LOD biases we just talked about. On the plus side, you will get way better FPS, less input delay, and your game will run way smoother than before. So go and try this program out. You can always come back to it and change anything you want and let me know your results.
The final setting I'm gonna cover that will wrap up the video is not a new one, but it's one that I get asked about a ton. The setting I'm talking about is your colorblind mode. Colorblind modes in Fortnite, as I'm sure you guys know, used to be a huge deal. Options like Deuteranope and Tritonope would make it way easier to see into the zone and gave huge advantages to competitive players. With the introduction of Chapter 2, however, that all changed as Epic made the storms much more transparent. Still, I get asked almost every single day whether or not colorblind modes are worth using. My honest answer is that it all comes down to preference. If you're someone like Mongrel who has been on Deuteranope 10 for more than 6 months, then you should probably stick on it. By now, you're used to how the colors look, and there's no inherent disadvantage in staying on it. Vice versa, if you're someone like me, who has never liked or put on a colorblind mode, then you probably shouldn't switch. Like I just said, there is absolutely no advantage in using it anymore. So, I know this section was not as interesting as the other ones. I guess you can blame Epic Games for that. The point is, colorblind modes are completely preference in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2. Overall guys, those are all the newest pro settings you have to try out. Keep in mind, all of the changes I showed can be reverted. You can either just go reverse in the steps I showed to implement them, or you can remove any of the programs or devices off of your PC. Additionally, if you're really having trouble, you can always DM me on Twitter and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. So, if you if you guys enjoyed the video, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerrion. I truly appreciate all the support recently. I've been getting an insane amount of views on YouTube as well as supporters on Epic Games, and it's all because of you guys pushing me forward. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.